God bless you and welcome to another day of victory. As much as the gifts of the Holy Spirit are important, so are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. They're very attractive and let's look at them right now. There's no way to talk about the Holy Spirit without talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But on the other hand, we also need to talk about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Uh, there needs to be a balance between the fruit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you read 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14, which deals primarily with the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how they are supposed to work in the church today, in between you have 1 Corinthians 13, which is the great love uh, chapter. And if you read that, out of love comes the gifts of the, I'm sorry, comes the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So let's talk about that a little bit. I want you to go with me to Galatians, Galatians, the fifth chapter in verse 16. The Apostle Paul says, I say then walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Here, uh, the spiritual life, life of the Spirit, everything that has to do with the Spirit has to do with walking in such a way that my ego will not interfere that whatever is in my flesh. Uh, Paul contradicts spirit and flesh here constantly uh, in all his writings, but especially in Galatians and Romans. And uh, fle the flesh in a person, in a Christian person. Now, there are some that don't believe that we have it. Yes, we do. Uh, of course, we are not dead in our sins anymore. We've been restored to life in Christ Jesus through uh, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, through the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's given us eternal life, but we still have a flesh. We still have the tendencies to, to um, do things that are in opposite to the will of God. Uh, that's what the flesh is. The flesh is that part of your personality, of your life, uh, that constantly opposes God, constantly criticizes God, constantly doubts God, constantly wants to live independent of God. And that's why Paul is pretty strong in uh, Romans, the eighth chapter, where he deals about the car talks about the carnal, ma carnal mind. And he says the carnal mind is an enmity towards God. This is, I think, the fifth, sixth verse in Romans 8. And uh, there you see there is a strength in it. It actually hates God. And that's why Paul in Romans, the seventh chapter, says that in my flesh there is no good, doesn't exist. So I have something in me that if I give it attention, if I yield to it, it will oppose God. It will attack God and it will force me to live independent of God. And me living independent of God is a disaster. I'm made for communion with God. I've been given the life of God through the Holy Spirit. I'm to yield to God, to have koinonia, fellowship, and obedience towards God. And the flesh will fight this all the way. So there is a war. Uh, and he also the Apostle Peter talks about it, that there is a war in our members between uh, God's will and the will of the flesh. So Paul is saying in Galatians uh, 5.16, uh, I say then walk in the Spirit. Th that's the solution. Walk in the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The, the lust is there. The desire for false independence, the desire for rebellion, the desire for revenge, the desire for, for carnal lust and so forth, for uncleanness, whatever it is, for pride is there. But you will not fulfill that desire, that lust, because of a stronger urge, which is the urge of the Holy Spirit. For the flesh lusts or wars against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And this war is in your members. And these are contrary to one another. I mean, the flesh and the spirit are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, and then he goes on to describe the workings of the flesh. And he says, this is verse 19. It's very evident, he says, is idolatry, is fornication, uncleanness, and lewdness. We've got four things there that deals with different ways of sexual immorality. You have idolatry, you have sorcery, you have hatred, you have contentions. Uh, some people can never agree with anybody, it just has to fight all the time. Jealousies, 
outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, schisms, uh, heresies. It's interesting that heresy comes actually from the lusts of the flesh. Uh, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's very dangerous on a consistent basis to live this type of life. If you go around being upset with people all the time, if you go around being jealous on a consistent basis, you make it a lifestyle. If you move into heresy, stay there for the rest of the life because you like it, because it, it, it caters to your pride, it enhances your pride. Uh, in the end, Pride goes before fall, and there you and I will miss the kingdom of God. So, we should not fulfill the lust of the flesh, but we should yield to the Spirit. We should walk in the Spirit. If we walk in the Spirit, there will be an evidence of that walk. The evidence of walking in the Spirit. What is the evidence that you and I walk in the Spirit? Is that all the revelations we have, all the power that works in our life, all the... All the uh, uh, visions we see or the miracles we can see. No, these are wonderful things. But Paul is not referring to them as an outward manifestation of walking in the Spirit. Now, he refers the outward manifestation of walking in the Spirit to the fruit of the Spirit. This is what he talks about. And that's why sandwiched in between 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 is chapter 13, which is a description of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is rooted in love. So now, he, say, he goes, after describing the lusts of the flesh and the workings of the flesh, he goes to the solution. We should not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Uh, we, should be, we should yield to the Spirit. We should walk in the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit, as a result of that walk, there is a fruit. And the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, first thing. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And again, such things, there are no law. And then he comes, and this is the punchline. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh. Crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another envying one another. It's beautiful, beautiful scripture. Very, very important. So what is he saying in here? Now you and I, we have been crucified with Christ. We died with Christ. This is a working of the Holy Spirit in our lives to take away the old man. We're buried with Christ in baptism. We've been risen to newness of life. This is Romans the sixth chapter. And as we've been risen to newness of life, now there's something beautiful that has come. Now instead of the law of sin and death, there's the law of the spirit of life. We now have the Holy Spirit. And as Christians, although we have a flesh, although we have frailties, incompleteness, although the possibility to sin is there, and we do sin, and that's why we constantly need to repent and constantly need to be more conforming to, uh, conforming to His image, that we constantly need to um, uh, correct ourselves and listen to the spirit of prophecy that will deal with things in our lives so that we can come in line with the uh, Word of God and with the will of God. Uh, then, as we, as we uh, confess uh, our sins, as we plead the blood and ask for forgiveness, the Holy Spirit can work in our lives so that out of our lives will not come that which the world, world, is, world is full of. The world is full of idolatry, sorcery, hate, hatred, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions and heresies. Instead, something beautiful come. We will see in you the character of Jesus. Now, the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the abilities of, of the Father being seen in the Son because of the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the Holy Spirit is the character of the Father being manifest in the Son because of the Holy Spirit. And because we are in the Son, in Christ Jesus, the character of the Father and the Son, I should say, and the Holy Spirit, the triune God, is now being more and more, step by step, as you walk in the Spirit, being manifested in your life. Those are the, um, these nine uh, fruits of the Spirit. Love, 
joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and against those there are no law. The law cannot stop this. You see, the law will constantly tell you that uh, you cannot do this because, and you know in your flesh you can't. So you have an aspiration, you have a longing, uh, and you, you, you're striving for it, but you will never obtain, you'll never attain. Why? Because the law is oh, it's too much. You can never save yourself through the law. But as the Holy Spirit starts to work in your life and you yield to the Holy Spirit and the workings of the Holy Spirit in your life, you will start to response, respond differently in life. Uh, when somebody hits you, on your left, on your, or your right chin, you will turn the left. If somebody speaks evil of you, you'll give that to the Lord and the Spirit of glory will come upon you. Somebody is uh, really manifesting its ego and elevating him or, her or herself. Uh, you do, will not counter that and start to show how good you are, how much you've gone, how much you've done. This is, I'm not talking about non-Christians now, I'm talking about Christians. It's amazing how we compete with one another. It's amazing how we feel rejected by one another. If somebody comes in that really has done a lot in the kingdom and so on, we feel rejected, we feel inferior, we become jealous, we, jealous, we, we, we start a backbite, we react so carnally. All these things can be cured when we walk in the Spirit. I don't say they're cured overnight. It's a lifetime of listening and yielding to the Holy Spirit. But the important thing is that these fruits start to manifest, that we don't just look for signs and wonders, that we don't just look for unusual manifestations. We don't fly all over the world to get in some campaign somewhere so we can you know, listen to somebody that says he's seen angels or that he is, have all these outrageous manifestations. Now, some of them is, is perfectly legitimate and some is just crazy. No, no, no. We don't need to do that. We don't need to run all over the world for extra manifestations. We can listen right in the room where we sit with the people that we worship together with and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and allow Him to manifest the wonderful fruits of the Holy Spirit step by step and people will see Jesus in your life. God bless you and thank you for watching this episode. The fruits of the Holy Spirit is so precious and so powerful. And it absolutely shows forth Jesus in all his glory in our lives. And we will continue to talk about these in the coming episodes. But until then, have another day. Have a great day.